All right, so I know we're like on this whole death kick, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I lost my dad recently, so this is probably the most important bedtime story I'm ever going to tell my little six-year-old back there. Um, Aviano has been coming to downtown events since he was the newborn over here's age. So it's something that, you know, we raise our kids up in this culture and we make them understand what mommies and daddies and everybody before us are building down here so they get a different appreciation of it. So my father was my hero. He was my everything. He was my best friend, my biggest fan, and my biggest critic, and he was an asshole. <laughs> he was a Sicilian father who was hard on me and pretty much raised me to be his firstborn son. So um, as I'm raising up my boy, Aviano, I want you to know about your pap and how awesome he was. So Pap Pap had a very high bar. So all this pressure that we put on ourselves day to day, he did that to me minute by minute, and that was after school when I was in kindergarten Tuesday night at the dinner table to ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I always wanted to be a teacher. I always wanted to, you know, instill the fun of learning and education and everything you could pull out of that because of how I was born and raised into the restaurant business and how I saw my family kind of instill some skills the way they did. So it, just teaching was in my blood, I felt. So I went to school to be a teacher, and my dad, from the time I was five, told me that I was one day going to be a CEO because we had our own pizza shop, and I would walk in there and act like I owned the joint. If you don't wash the dishes, I'm telling my daddy. And I did the same thing up until I'm 34 years old doing the same thing, but I can't tell my daddy anymore because he's not there to share those stories with. So as you grow up and you have these, you know, these memories that you're making moment to moment, and what you're doing in the moment may be so minuscule and so minor, and then you know we wait till January 1st to make this huge resolution that everything's going to change because we have this goal and this frame of mind and this mindset that that is the day, that is the mark, we're going to start new. Sometimes you're not guaranteed the next day, let alone the next year. So in resolutions, and I have always hated resolutions because I believe that the day you wake up is the day you start making a change. When you grow up and you do these things that you were taught and then you're, you're now an adult and you're alone now because you know your family's not there as much as you thought they would be forever, and you're setting out to really make a name for yourself and a name for your family and that's your you all baby. <laughs> That's your, you know, your legacy that you leave behind. So Doug Knight leaves us recently. My father left us recently. And a lot of, a lot of thoughts go through your head now. And I know every single one of us has experienced a loss in this room. A lot of things go through your head. Like, am I making the most of it? Oh my gosh, we're not guaranteed. It's this whole like takes you from here to here in a matter of seconds. And then you have to learn how to, how to live in that space. So as we're all focused on January, what, 15th? I woke up yesterday and said, happy 14th day of January. What are you going to do with it? Happy 15th day, happy 16th day. Because as long as we still have it, you know, as long as we're still here, who gives a shit about the small things? Who gives a shit that it took you so long to get the lease? You got it, girl. You did it. I'm proud of you. <laughs> right? And, you know, you ran and you crossed that finish line, Matthew. And it's just, and Aviano, you went to school today and you got green because consistency is key, right? Right? So it's about every second of every day and what you do with it and be present in the moment. Not so much worried about what you're not doing, what you're doing wrong, what you could do better, what you could do differently. Damn it, we're still here and we're still breathing. We're still here and we're still, you know, supporting one another. We're here coming to Story Slam for the fourth year. These are all things that are taken for granted and we're all sometimes hard on ourselves because it's not enough. When is it ever enough? My father was a professional blackjack player. We lived life highs and lows. A uh, produce broker, uh, any, a serial entrepreneur, anything he touched he turned into a business. Mortgage company, flipping real estate, insurance company, a motivational speaker, everything was my prime example. Pilot by the time he was 24. So this was my example. This is my bar, right? So it's, it's that man who was born and raised in Princess Street Projects, moved every month when the rent was due, made that example for me. And I'm sitting here telling you this story to let you know there are no barriers. There are no classifications that you have to meet in order to make a change, a difference, an impact. Just be, you know? So I would say get rid of resolutions as my resolution. 
and not worry about an expectation or, you know, am I achieving what I want to achieve? As long as we live and breathe, just make the most of every moment. Have a good glass of wine. Buy the expensive thing you're saving up for. And do the damn thing, right? Because you only have today. Forget January 1st of 2020. What are you going to do today? That is all.